Well, the long, slow descent into hell continues. Here I stand, mere shell of a man reduced through hardship and bad luck to the low, low status of being a prop pundit. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at some everyday items, shall we? This is a Q-tip. This is a Kleenex. Here's a chapstick. And here is a Band-Aid. Nothing remarkable, really, but here's where the fun begins. Because this is not a Q-tip. This is a cotton swab. Q-tip is a brand of cotton swabs, and this isn't one of them. This isn't a Kleenex. This is a facial tissue. Kleenex is a brand of facial tissue, but they didn't make this. And uh, this isn't a chapstick. This is lip balm. Chapstick is the brand name for one of the many lip balms available for purchase. It's not this one. And finally, this is not a Band-Aid. It's an individually wrapped sterile adhesive bandage. Band-Aid was the brand name given to these handy little things, and that's what everybody calls them, but that's not one of them. Now, when a trademark or a brand name becomes so dominant that all similar items are called by the brand name, whether they're made by that company or not, we say that the brand name in question, Q-tip, Kleenex, Chapstick, or Band-Aid, for example, have undergone a process called genericification. The process of turning a brand name into a product description is called genericide. No, it's honest to God, a real word. You can just Google it if you want. Whenever you apply a brand name to identify a generic item, you can say at the very least that the product is so dominant in the marketplace that while there is technically at least some competition, there's really no competition. And this same exact thing has happened to a company called Google. When you say you're going to Google something, you generally mean that you're going to use the Google search engine to go out onto the internet and come back with an answer. Most of the time, when we say we're going to Google something or someone, what we really mean is that we're going to find out whether something is true or not. Now, here's the problem. Q-tips work exactly the same whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. A Kleenex is no softer on a progressive face than it is on a conservative one, Chapstick equally protects both left and right wing lips, and a Band-Aid will work exactly the same whether you live in a blue state or a red one. Social media companies are not like that. It's been proven without question that Facebook, the Google search engine, and YouTube use purposely created algorithms to suppress conservative-leaning information and to promote progressive information. That is as unfair, as criminal, as immoral, and as un-American as it can be, and it has to stop. Because no one would tolerate a swab that used cotton for liberal ears, but steel wool if you put it inside a conservative ear. Or if your Kleenex was made of sandpaper if you didn't vote the way that the folks at Kleenex wanted you to vote. Chapsticks are not made out of sulfuric acid if you live in Texas. And Band-Aid does not sell a tetanus-infected version of the bandage if they find out that a kid with a skin knee has parents who vote Republican. So here's argument number one for breaking up the social media companies. I maintain that biased search results and suppression of videos based on the whims of a bunch of arrogant, elitist, snot-nosed bastards up in Mountain View, California, is being done without our consent or even our awareness, and it is therefore a fraudulent business practice. People who run fraudulent businesses usually go to jail. Argument two, Google, YouTube, and Facebook are monopolies by any reasonable definition of the term. Now look, I am a rock solid, private property, mind your own business kind of guy. I have no problem whatsoever with a restaurant that wants to charge me five times the price on the menu because I come in wearing a MAGA hat. That's his business. He can run it the way he wants to. And I have no problem with this because if I don't like it, I can simply go to another restaurant. However, if the electric company decided to charge me five times what my neighbor gets charged because the people who run the electric company can't tolerate the idea that somebody thinks differently than they do, well, now that, my friends, is a different story altogether. The electric company is a monopoly, and monopolies have to play by different rules because if I don't like their service, I don't get to go to another less fascist electricity provider. And I also don't get to go down the road of, hey, if you don't like your electricity, then just don't use it. Argument number three, these left-wing social media companies are trying to have it both ways. You have to bake the cake, and they're going to tell you who can eat it, too. Now, as far as personal responsibility on the internet goes, it turns out you can either be a publisher or a carrier. I'm a publisher in exchange for saying whatever the hell I want to say with no obligation to tell you whether I'm lying or not. 
I have to also assume the responsibilities that come with my editorializing. I am liable for all of my content. I can be blocked from using copyrighted materials. I can be sued for libel or defamation if I publish something I know to be untrue with malicious intent to harm someone. Now, Facebook, YouTube, and Google claim that they're not publishers. They claim to be that other thing, a carrier. Carriers have different sets of rules. Imagine if I could sue YouTube if somebody reposted one of my videos without my permission. Not the channel owner who did it, but the parent company, YouTube itself. How many Star Wars images, how many Marvel Universe characters, or video game clips, and all of the other copyrighted material that's carried on YouTube or Facebook in any given day, how much is that? It's millions of them every single day. Could YouTube, not the user channel again, but the actual host company, if YouTube could be sued for every single one of those copyright violations? Well, there wouldn't be any YouTube or Facebook or Google if that were the case. They claim they're simply carrying that material and therefore they're not responsible for it. But by deciding what you see or don't see based on their own political views, well, that's just plain editorializing. And that makes them a publisher. And if they had to play by publisher rules, they'd be sued out of business by the end of the week. If Google, YouTube, and Facebook are carriers, then deciding who gets to see what is against the law. But if they do get to decide who gets to see what, then they're not carriers and they have to forfeit all of those protections. Now, these tech giants are not going to suddenly learn to behave themselves voluntarily, needless to say, which is why they need to be broken up. Breaking up the phone company put them into competition with each other, the little pieces, the baby bells, and it turned a $5 per minute long distance call into unlimited long distance for a small monthly fee. Oh, and finally, just a quick shout out to the tens if not hundreds of thousands of people who push buttons on YouTube and Facebook in order to see this video, but who will never, ever even hear of it because people who don't like me don't like you either. <laughs>